creaming, you're making a cream today. So I would say this is, I love this lab. Hopefully you'll enjoy this lab as well. I would say this is one of the two, I think suspensions that we did last week. And this group, those creams and ointments are probably the most important thing that you kind of be comfortable in compounding that you'll see even in a retail pharmacy that doesn't specialize in compounding. Topical products are something that you're gonna make very frequently. So uh, there was a long podcast. If you, you know, I was surprised to see some of you here before 7 a.m. studying for this pre-lab quiz. So anyways, I'm gonna delusion myself and believe that. But anyways, hopefully you got to watch some of it because it's, uh, broil it down. Creams versus ointment. You're going to have to put it on your label on the exam next week. So I want to make sure you use the correct definition and will be brought up today with your own commercial product that you're going to make today. Do you call it a cream or do you call it an ointment? So let's just be clear. I want you to use the current definitions of those. So an ointment, we say something dosage form is an ointment. It refers to a semi-solid. What is a semi-solid? It's not a liquid, it's not a powder, it's semi-solid. It's physical, but it's soft, it, it's, it's malleable. You can rub it in or on the skin and so forth. So, But there are different types of semi-solids. An ointment is one that is thick, stiff, greasy, and kind of not water washable. It'll rub on the skin and stay there for a while because it doesn't, and it doesn't provide water necessarily, but it holds water underneath the skin, they're occlusive. Think about Vaseline. If you, I'm trying to picture one that you guys, kind of a classic version that you can visualize in the term of anointment. It's stiff, it's greasy, it's thick, it's yellow, and that's anointment. What is a cream? A cream is white in color. It's soft, it rubs into the skin, it washes off with water, it actually provides water. There's water in cream, so they hydrate the skin. They're not occlusive because they rub into the skin. So there are definitely different properties between an ointment and a cream. Visually, hopefully, you can have seen some of my examples and today you'll see and be able to walk away with a clear distinction between what you would call a cream and what you would call with an ointment, okay? So be aware of those, all right? Now, here's the, an overall thing. You are today going to mix a solid, in this case, urea for your wet lab, and you're going to put it into a cream base, aquaphilic ointment, okay? You're going to add those two together. If you just mix the powder with the cream, you have the same problem as last week. If you just add liquid to a powder, it clumps together. When you make a suspension, right, you had to slowly wet the powder so you didn't get those powder clumps. Well, how do we avoid getting powder clumps in our cream or our ointment? Because if you do, it's got this really gritty feel to it. And again, it wouldn't have very uh, even concentrations. So we have to disperse the powder in our semi-solid using what we're calling gonna call a levigating agent. And I'll talk more about that, but there are agents, liquids that you're gonna use to kind of help disperse the solid within the semi-solid, okay? So, but to understand which levigating agent to use, you need to understand that agent has to be compatible with the base that you're using. So on the exam next week, we just wanna boil it down since you guys don't know anything about exams at this point. I'm so sorry, I know you guys are having a rough week. But anyway, so for next week, realize I'm gonna set out anyone on this slide, if you look on the lower part here, and this comes straight out of the podcast, any one of those commercial names, I would expect that you could be able to identify the type of base that is, okay? And it turns out, to be honest with you, if you got to remember anything, you're going to draw a line between these. And frankly, it's easiest to remember these versus those, because again, if you know it's one of these, then you'll be able to select the correct levigating agent. So what, let's start at the bottom here. The class to remember is that if, if it is a water containing either water soluble or water in oil, no, I said that backwards, I'm sorry, and oil in water, okay? So oil and water or water soluble base, Water is the external phase. It's going to be the majority of the base is composed of water. Then that base is gonna be in glycerin, okay? So which ones do you need to know to be able to know that's the, the levigating agent you use? Well, the big one that you're using today is aquaphilic ointment or a vanishing cream or a velvacol or, or derma base. Those are the main ones listed there. Any one of those names, you'd have to be able to say, okay, that was the one that had an oil and water kind of base. Since water is the external phase, I would use the water-based levigating agent. The rest of the classes are more oil-based and there's a, several of them. So remember how I talked about Vaseline. Vaseline is a classic hydrocarbon. There is no water in Vaseline. You can't even get water into Vaseline. 
The first compound I always remember making at the KU Medical Center was for 5% liquid coal tar. And you're going to see that here with Dr. Wu. She's going to use liquid coal tar in her ingredient, but it's a liquid. And it was 5% that liquid in uh, Vaseline. And so I got my Vaseline out, made a little divot, poured some of this LCD on top and took my spatula and swish, 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 swish. That's a fancy sound for spatulation, but I spatulated back and forth. And then I stopped and it just puddled on the top. I did it some more and it just puddled on the top. It never mixed with the base. So how do you get an ointment base like uh, Vaseline, but that you can incorporate a liquid into? That's what they've invented the anhydrous absorption. So the second one down on this list is the one that you're gonna see Dr. Wu do here a little bit called Aquaphor. Aquaphor looks just like Vaseline, but you know what they've added to it? Emulsifiers. An emulsifier is something that can take a liquid and an oil and mix them together. So again, now because there's emulsifiers in the actual ointment base, when you take that LCD and you mix it back and forth with the aquaphor, it just sucks in. It just absorbs it straight into it. So remember, and this is what's always confusing, when you hear a name like aquaphor, aqua means water, but it doesn't have water in it. The P-H-O-R means loving. So water loving. Aqua 4 is an ointment base that can absorb water. That's why it's very useful. Okay. And then lastly, going back to the emulsion types, I talked about uh, oil and water. And now what if we go the other direction where we put the water in the oil, they're used as a very common kind of ointment base. It's kind of, if you've heard of Eucerin or Nivea, um, kind of cold cream as well. They're kind of a mixture between the yellow ointment and the white cream. They're kind of an off-white, stiffer, seems like a cream, but actually they're a little bit oily. They're, uh, they're emollient to the skin and they are not easily water washable. So they're kind of in the middle, but we still categorize them as kind of the oil bases, okay? I'm not sure I did a great job here. And hopefully you had some background from the podcast. In the end, remember, the bases have to be on your label because they convey properties. They're either emollient or they're hydrating or they're, they're gonna stay on the skin and be occlusive. So those properties are important. So we include their name on the label and we also have to be able to choose the right external levigating agent, okay? So what I was getting down to, I'll remind you on this, the two levigating agents that are set out there on the supply stations today that you will be out there on the exam that you'll have to choose from are mineral oil and glycerin. Mineral oil is the liquid you will mix with your powder to levigate it if you're using an oil base, semi-solid. So that's the hydrocarbons, the anhydrous absorption, or the water in oil bases. Any of those three categories, those bases you would use mineral oil. Mainly the only ones that you're gonna use for the glycerin would be a big category though, are gonna be the oil and water emulsion bases or possibly water soluble. So the one you're doing today is aquaphilic ointment. Even though it says ointment, it's a cream. It's a oil and water base. You're going to use glycerin. Why don't you just use water? If it's water compatible, why wouldn't you use water? Well, water splashes, it's very thin. It would run all over the pill tile. So you're gonna to see today glycerin is essentially 99% water, but the amount of glycerol in there helps increase the surface tension quite a bit. So think of it like sticky water. So glycerin's only real advantage is that it's water that's sticky and doesn't run everywhere and it's easier to work with. So again, if the base is compatible with water because it's an oil and water, you use glycerin. If it's an hydrocarbon anhydrous absorption or a water in oil, you're going to use mineral oil. That I expect you to have memorized. I know it's not that difficult compared to everything else you do, but be prepared for that, okay? And you'll get a chance to practice it today. Now, those are what we call external levigating agents, meaning they're not called for in the preparation. The doctor will not indicate on the prescription to add glycerin or mineral oil, but it's something the pharmacist can add because they're inert products, they're, the drug, they're liquids that don't really add anything therapeutically, but they help facilitate the solid powder to be dispersed in the semi-solid to make a nice final product. So those are called external levigating agents because you add them in addition to what was actually prescribed. Okay. The amount to prepare, this is hugely important. Trust me, you'll see that today. When you, when you make your creamier ointment on these ointments uh, or on these parchment papers, some of it sticks and gets absorbed into the paper and there is loss. There's loss on the, the spatulas, there's loss everywhere. So you definitely need to calculate and prepare 10% excess. You'll only dispense the prescribed amount, but you're lucky even to get that so long as you at least start with 10% excess. So remember that for your calculations, it's really important. 
And the last thing, you're going to make your cream or your ointment on your uh, parchment paper. Then you have to put your final product in the ointment jar. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but there's two things. A, you got to get the ointment or the cream inside the jar. If it's slathered all over on the outside of the jar, if I pick up your jar and it slips out of my hand, we're going to take off points. So that's why you're going to have to clean the jar. So make sure that, and it's harder than it sounds, but you got to get all the product on the inside. But once you get it on the inside, what you're going to get a chance to practice today, hopefully you may be watched on the video, you have to kind of what we call the procedure step is dress the product, meaning not a little tutu or anything, but you're going to take your spatula and smooth the top of it and then kind of lift up slowly and get a nice little Dairy Queen swirl on the top. So it makes it look like a nice finished product. You can't just slap it in there and put the lid on. So we expect you to dress the ointment or cream by kind of smoothing it down and making a nice little lip, making it clean with a little bit of paper towel on the inside and presentable. So don't forget to do that step. You'll see it on the procedure, but it's something you got to do. And we definitely grade for it on your final product on the test. Okay. All right, man. Let's just go through our dry lab. You ready? Get your calculators out. You're going to do some calculations here in a second. So start interpreting the prescription is for Sylvia Jones. And the doctor has prescribed LCD. And this is a very common ingredient to, to incorporate into external or topical products. LCD stands for liquid Carbonus detergus. And you remember I kind of mentioned that before, the one that I used at the med center. It's a liquid. It actually is a liquid coal tar solution. It smells and looks as nasty as that is. You'll see Judy do it here in a minute, but it's this kind of yellow, staining, stinky, because it's a derivative from coal shale. But what it does, it's really good on psoriasis. It gets into the psoriasis, kind of breaks up the, the tissue and helps slough off the top layer of the skin. Okay. So it helps kind of remove the top layer. We're going to combine that with uh, hydrocortisone, and hydrocortisone, hopefully you know, is kind of an anti-inflammatory steroid, so it'll help shrink the redness and the swelling, and we'll get rid of the eczema or, and the psoriasis on the very top layer, and that's a good combination. So 5% LCD, 2.5% hydrocortisone. While it's not listed on here, external or topical products are... Concentrations are expressed as a weight per weight. So that is a 5% weight per weight, 2.5% weight per weight. That'll be an important consideration in our calculations here in a minute. Okay. Going on. The base the doctor wants us to use is aquaphor, as we said, was that anhydrous absorption base, QSAD 30 grams. Be careful with your interpretation. It's not saying 30 grams of aquaphor. QSAD means up to a total of 30 grams. So everything, drugs included, total has to be 30 grams. Important for our calculations as well. All right. Now, look to the right-hand side, some important information on the additional information. Realize on the test, I will not remind you to calculate for 10% excess, but today, calculate for 10% excess. Next week, calculate for 10% excess. I just won't remind you on the test. That's a learning thing I expect for you to just know about preparing topicals. Okay, creams and ointments. What I will provide you on the test is always the specific gravities. You're going to see here in our calculations today, we're going to need to know how to convert the weight of a liquid to a volume or the volume of a liquid to a weight. So I will provide you the specific gravities, which again, we will treat like densities for each of your products. So again, I've provided those that we're going to need here and I will on the test as well. Okay, so LCD, hydrocortisone, aquaphor. Not that difficult. So again, how do they come? The hydrocortisone is a pure bulk powder. So no more tablets or capsules as a source of our ingredients. We get we, whatever we need for hydrocortisone. That's what we weigh out. We have it as a bulk powder. We also essentially have a pure source of LCD. So our liquid carbonus detergent is 100% LCD. So it's a liquid that we'll have to measure by volume. It's a liquid. And then lastly, we have that aquaphor ointment that will weigh out whatever amount that we use. So three ingredients. Ready? Let's do our calculations. So uh, I'll say it up front and then give you a chance to work on them ahead of me and then I'll follow up with you. So start off, let's determine though, all of our calculations are gonna be based on the weight to prepare. So what amount, what is the total weight to prepare? It's not the same as the weight to dispense because we need to prepare excess. So take and see if you can figure out how much should we base all of our calculations on in terms of preparation. Give me just a second and then I will follow up and write my own answer. Okay, that's an easy one. And we're going to dispense 30 grams. 
but we need to prepare 10% excess. So multiply by 110% or 1.1, and I got 33 grams. Hopefully you all got 33 grams. That's our total weight of everything that we want to prepare. All right. Now, let's start with number two. And this is important, though, the required weight of LCD. I'll remind you that 5% was a weight per weight percentage. So go ahead and calculate how many grams of LCD, what weight of LCD do we need for this prescription? Hopefully you got that pretty straightforward. It's 33 grams. We're at our total to prepare times 5%. So that's going to be five grams of LCD over hundred grams of ointment. So you multiply that by the 33 and grams of ointment cancel. And I got 1.65 grams of LCD. Okay. So could you weigh a liquid? Sure. You could stick a conical on the scale, hit tear and add liquid into it. Weighs a certain amount. Oh, that's a pain in the butt. I'm not going to do that because I was given the specific gravity, which essentially is a density. So I can convert the weight of that liquid to the volume of that liquid using the density slash specific gravity. Just make sure you're careful with your units. So in this case, what I wanna do is convert the weight of my LCD to its corresponding volume to make it easy to measure. So do that, let's do that. So 1.65 is my weight, grams of LCD. Now, I gave you on the additional information that the specific gravity is 0 0.87. And again, I won't give you the units on the exam either because what you should understand is that a specific gravity is the weight of the drug or the product per one gram of water. It's standardized per water. But since we know one gram of water is equal to one milliliter of water, that's why I'm saying we can treat it just like a density because that means that LCD is 0.87 grams of LCD per milliliter. Okay, so let's use that. So, but I want milliliters on top. So I'm gonna put one milliliter on top and my lights just went out. So give me a second, 1.87 grams of LCD. So go ahead and do that math if you haven't done it and tell me what volume of LCD do you need? There's the same as 1.65 grams of LCD. So I think I got 1.9 milliliters, okay? Now, circle that. That's an important number. That's going to go on our compounding record. You just now calculated the volume of this LCD solution we need to use to be able to prepare our product. Okay. Let's move on. That's the LCD. It's out of the way. Let's deal with the hydrocortisone. Go ahead. You do that real quick. I'll give you one second. That's an easy one. Remember, we want two and a half percent weight for weight to be hydrocortisone. Did you get 0 0.825 grams of hydrocortisone? That's just simply 33 grams times 2.5 divided by 100 to get 0 0.825 grams of hydrocortisone. So that would go up here. All right. We're almost done now, man. All we got to do is figure out the amount of aquaphor. And remember, that's just our total minus each of our ingredients. All right. So let's do that. Go ahead and do it. Let's see. So I'll do mine. You do yours. Okay, let's see, did I do something wrong? Look at my work, did I do something wrong? I did things wrong. What did I do wrong? The first thing I did wrong was I went back to my 30 grams. Trust me, these are things I see on the exams all the time. So remember to start with our amount to prepare, which we said was 33 grams, all right? From that weight, we need to subtract the weight of our ingredients. 
that was a volume. So that's not right. So I need to subtract 1.65 grams. And that's from the LCD, right? So don't forget that would be an improvement. This was right, 0 0.825 grams, because that's my hydrocortisone. But wait a minute. What about my levigating agent, right? So remember, hydrocortisone is a powder. It's a solid powder. You can't just mix it with a stiff ointment base like Aquaphor without it getting all clumpy. So let me ask you, which of the two levigating agents, glycerin or mineral oil, would you use to compound, to add as an external levigating agent to compound this product based off of what? The base we're using. So in this case, which is Aquaphor. What kind of base is Aquaphor? It's a anhydrous absorption base. It's one of the three oil bases that we talked about. So clearly mineral oil would be the levigating agent that would be compatible with Aquaphor. Okay, we're not worried about the chemical or the drug or the powder, it's about the base. We want it compatible with the base. So notice in the additional information I gave you the specific gravity slash density for mineral oil. It's like 0.88 grams per milliliter. So we could use that. So do we have to account for that here in this calculation? Yes and no. If we were to use it, then absolutely yes. But guess what? We're not going to use it. Why? Remember, I said mineral oil is an external levigating agent. You use it if there is nothing that's already in the formula that could be used to levigate it. And if there was no liquid in the formulation, we'd have to add mineral oil. But wait a minute, we're gonna be using 1.9 milliliters of LCD. It's a liquid, it's going to be, it's called for in the formulation itself. That's what we would call an internal levigating agent. It's not external, it's internal. It's already to be used in the formulation. So why would we add something separate? So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to levigate, or meaning wet the powder, the hydrocortisone powder with the ingredient that's gonna be in there as well with the LCD. Therefore, we don't need to add anything extra. So the only ingredients in this product will be the hydrocortisone, the LCD and the aquaphor. So go ahead and just go ahead and figure out what is 33 grams minus the 1.65 grams for the LCD minus the 0 0.825 grams for the hydrocortisone to figure out how much aquaphor we need. So what is the total amount of aquaphor? I think I got 30. Point five to five grams of aquaphor. And circle that. Now I forgot to tell you to circle that because those are our target amounts. We now know each of the amounts of the things that we need. So let's go back to our formulation or our compounding record, I should say, and write down our target amount. So what was our target amount for the high cortisol powder? We just had 0 0.825 grams. LCD, we said 1.9 milliliters. And again, do you put the grams or you put the milliliters? Well, what are you actually gonna measure? We're actually gonna measure it by volume. So let's go ahead and put 1.9 milliliters for both the target and the actual. And my aquaphor target was 30.525 grams for the aquaphor, okay? So there you have it. So we now know all of our specific ingredients. So before Dr. Wu comes in here, let me just kind of quickly talk about the procedure. So turn to your procedure and then Dr. Wu will do it all here. I want to just point out a couple of the words. So on your hard copy that may look just a little bit different, be sure and circle the words levigate. That's a, an important part. So you're going to levigate. I keep talking about that, that you levigate the powder. We're going to show you that here. That's basically to liquefy the powder. You're then using your spatulas back and forth to mix things that technique is called spatulation. So make sure that you have the term spatulation down there. You're going to use a lot of that. And then I will still tell you down here, this step six and step seven have a lot of little things. You need to definitely say how much of your product you're dispensing in a what size ointment jar. So make sure you clarify on that. And remember this step is to dress the final product and clean the ointment jar. Okay. Do not clean the product and dress the jar. That's just weird. So remember, you're dressing the product and cleaning the jar. So with that, if Dr. Wu will come in here, we will get started with the actual preparation. All right, I think we're ready to go. Okay, wonderful. So let's do some um, measurement first. Let's start with hydrocortisone. Here, our target weight is 0.8. Two 
I probably want to slow down as I'm approaching. Ooh, that's good. All right, so write down the actual for your hydrocortisone is 0 0.843. 0 0.843 grams is actual for hydrocortisone. Next one, let's go ahead and measure the weight for alcohol. All right, so the base is very sticky itself. So therefore, instead of using the scooper we've been using for man measurement, my balance is a little unstable today. Um, I'm gonna using, uh, where's my hand? Okay, using, uh, using metal spatula to do the transfer here. All right, so my goal is 30.525. So before you go any further, let's just kind of real quick, I just wanted, this is our first chance to maybe zoom in and see what aquaphor looks like. So remember how we talked about this is truly an ointment base. This is yellow. It's stiff. It's kind of thick. You'll watch Judy. It'll have little wings on it that you'll have to kind of cut off as she tries to weigh it. So this is kind of a classic ointment base. We are getting close. and I'll try to add a little bit more. And you have to... It's getting very close. And you have to kind of try to scrape on the side of your wave boat if it's really necessary, because it's very sticky. It's, it could have been hard to get to the point that you need. It may take a little time. So, that's a keeper. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's very good. All right, so let's write down the actual for the aquifer at 30.552. It was, let's do 30.552 grams. The last chemical that we need to measure and LCD. This is a liquid, so we are going to measure into a renal syringe. In my case, that uh, this bottle has very narrow neck, so I'm going to pull some out into a wave out and measure 1.9 mil here over here first. So see how yellow it is? It's very staining. It is kind of a tar solution. Judy, how would you describe the smell? Uh, smells not that good, even with the mask on. Very strong smell. It's in a lot of topical, sometimes uh, medicine used for acne as well. So it's a common ingredient for topicals. It's so dark, I couldn't even see well my line. Okay, I found it. Okay, good. All right, so this is all set. Pour the mess over back to the bottle. All right, we are all set with all the chemicals. And now we can move on to the procedure. And before we start, I want to explain a little bit. So again, we are using parchment paper. And this will be our second time using parchment paper. The first time was when we were making capsules. For me, because underneath here, I have some soft tissues. So I cannot take my parchment paper down on the bench directly. But you guys can because your bench is hard enough. So anyway, you don't necessarily need a uh, ointment slab like what I have here. All right, you can take one piece of hot parchment paper onto the uh, top of the bench directly. That's one thing. Second thing is when you take um, the ointment paper down, don't be lazy. Make sure you really take all four uh, all four corners. Because today, as you do the navigation and the speculation, you will realize that you are going to apply quite a few for forces on the uh, top of the paper. So make sure you take all uh, four corners down. All right, so now we are ready to move on to the procedure. Um, there we can read. So the read it specifically says, place the hydrocortisone powder on the ointment paper, wet the powder using a small amount of LCD. Levigate the powder and LCD using spatulation until a smooth paste is formed. All right, so I just placed the hydrocortisone powder on the ointment paper. And I want you guys to pay attention as well. As you place down the powder, make sure that they are gathered as close as possible. Because if you have little white powders on the side, it's really hard to gather them later to um, do the navigation. All right, so we are going to make a little divot in the middle. And start with a small amount of LCD, and I, I can cover it up, and then smash down, 
right? And clearly I'm not quite there yet. I still have a lot of powder there. So again, get the powders, make a little divot, add a little bit more LCD. So the question is, you can still see where it's kind of a flaky paste at this point. So write this down in the margins. This is the best way to describe where we want to stop. You want to describe the powder as a shiny, sticky glob. I'm not sure that's super technical. That's a Larry term, but a shiny, sticky glob. Once you see it, you'll never not know what I mean by that. But that's the best way to describe what we want. We don't want a puddle. We don't want a liquid. We want a shiny, sticky glob. So it is almost like a paste looking, except it's not runny. So it's it's like a wet paste looking. Okay, so that looks nice. And I wanted to gather everything together okay, and then put all there. All right, so that is the navigation process. Basically, we mix the liquid, in this case, LCD with the powder. So now, Judy, is there still some more LCD left? Oh, yeah, we have a lot of LCD left over here. Why didn't you add it all? Well, it will be too puddle in that case. So it, it will be too wet. It will, it will make it really hard to mix with the alcohol. So when will you add the LCD? At a later time. So remember, at this point, we only added enough to levigate the powder. We will still need to add the remainder at a later step. Mm -hmm. All right, so now this is the after navigation. We are going to transfer the alcohol over here, mix them together. At this point, you're going to do something very similar to the geometric division because you're adding only a small amount, roughly the, uh, the amount of alcohol or the base you have here compared to the uh, amount of uh, hydrocortisone you have here is about similar. All right, so mix those together and you're going to do speculation back and forth, back and forth, okay? And as you can see here, I'm using my smaller spatula uh, for right now because the amount of base mixed with drug is not a lot yet. And occasionally I like to collect my stuff together, put it in the middle and then start it one more time. All right, and smash down and then collect it together again and put it in the middle. All right, so let's do it one more time. We will say that's good because it looks uniform now. There's no color streaks. Okay, so now here's the second addition, so you can add about double the amount. All right, with this amount of base together with drug there though, I want to switch to a larger space. So hopefully you guys can tell the difference. I started with a small spatula, and I, I, now I want to go with a larger one. All right, so again, back and forth. And this specific motion I'm doing here is called a speculation. So back and forth, mixing, flattening together, do it again, flattening together, do it again. And you may realize that I'm really trying to focus in a small area because I don't want to spread everywhere because the more you spread out, the more loss you will have to a final product, all right? In addition, I also want to clean whatever the left on my small spatula, and I can do the process again. Okay, so this is really like a cooking process. If you like to bake a cake in the kitchen, this is very similar. Let's gather it together. All right, that's my second edition. And here comes the last edition. So I want to add everything now. All the empty base will go to the parchment paper. All right. And watch me. I really want to make sure that I'm not losing too much on the way though, because there will be so much loss for this whole procedure. Even though I have 10 percent access, you'll be surprised how much I am actually will end up having. So again, I want to squeeze as much as possible uh, from the results, all right, and mix that with my product. So here comes the speculation. Back and forth. And then again, when I'm too spread out and then I like to gather them together,
and you will appreciate the fact that I'm really, really using a small area in the, in the middle here, because I, one more time, the smaller area that you spread out, the less loss you have for your product. And usually when I try, when I am spreading out, then I try to gather together and place them in the middle one more time so that it will not further spreading out. Well, let me say one more So one thing real quick, how will you know when you're done? How will you know as you're mixing the stuff back and forth, what you're gonna to wanna to do is kind of stop and spread it kind of thin like that. And then let me zoom in here. What you're gonna to wanna to do is critically evaluate the appearance of your ointments. So I know it's kind of hard to see on the video, but you would look here, you'd look for darker streaks of that LCD or, or anything that's not been added. Look for little spots or dots or anything else. So kind of smoosh it out and then look. And just remember when you're mixing stuff, you really need to smoosh it all the way down and make little circles to kind of rub it out. That's the way that you're trying to get some things to mix together. You kind of really need to work it out. And again, I'm pushing down on it and you can kind of see it squish out a little bit, so. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is a very well mixed product. But the question is, is that it? Don't forget about the LCD that we still have some LCD left that has not been mixed together yet. All right, so I'm gonna gather everything together, place in the middle, and now we are ready to mix with the left LCD. All right, so I do not like to add all my LCD ones um, because if I add it too much, then it, it will, the liquid will spill out. So maybe I wanna do two additions. I wanna do one addition, try to cover up with my base, and even with this amount, that some, something spilled out. All right, so let's try to remember all that dark liquid. When it's all done, you'll see it seems to just disappear. It gets absorbed into that ointment base. Why like this is why that base is an excellent selection when you have a liquid product. And again, when you are too spreading out at some point, then gather together. Okay, and then you can start the process one more time. Okay. All right, that'll be the first edition. And now let's go ahead and do the second edition. Let's try to finish up with the rest of LCD. You want to do it a little more careful because the first time I did it too quick, I had a little spill here, there. Okay, at some point again, it's very important that you want to make sure that you're not spreading everywhere. All right, as careful as I am, I am definitely occupying like about half of the paper already. All right, and you will be surprised that how much loss it can happen. All right, let's do a one more last mixing. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with my product now. And we can check the product one more time. Looks like it's pretty uniform. I didn't really see any streak of yellow color. Okay, all right, so now the product is ready and now we are ready to transfer into a ointment jar. All right, so pay attention. Uh, you can tear the ointment jar without the lid or with the lid, as long as it's consistent. So you tear with the lid and then you measure with it, or you tear without it or you, then you measure without it. I personally like to tear without the lid. So tear, because I do not want the weight of the jar itself. And over here, I don't, so this kind of spectra is actually a medium size. You have even a smaller one. When you are ready to do transfer, actually the smaller the better, because even the medium one, it may cause a little bit of contamination on the, uh, on the ointment jar, okay? All right, so you want to start with a smaller amount, try to sand it to the bottom, okay? 
So to the right angle. Okay. So as you can see here, that it's very stiff. Okay. So therefore, it will not go to the bottom of the jar automatically. So what should you do? So watch me. I'm going to really hard, and hopefully you can see that it's now. It's, oh, I always don't know how to which direction it's pointing. See, it's on the bottom now. Okay. All right. So every addition as you add in. You want to stand to the bottom as much as you can. At the same time, tap really hard. Okay, let's do one more addition. And let's do another addition. Think about you have 30 grams and you're only using a one ounce, one ounce ointment jar. So it will be pretty full. If you don't do the tapping, if you have a big bubble underneath it, not be able to hold a 30 grand in the one ounce jar. <clears throat> I love lab when you guys start doing this yourselves. It sounds like a herd of woodpeckers out there. <laughs> All right, so as you can see here, that I hardly have any left over. Um, everything is pretty much in the ointment jar now. All right, so then this is about time. Let's see that whether we are getting close or not to the formulate. And what is my target? Oh, oh, I am very much far away from 30 grams. So this is all I have now. So let's see if I get everything in. Is that be good enough? That is good enough. Okay, she's trying to scrape up some more. Let's see if there's anything left she can get off of there. I mean, as, as you can see here, that I hardly have any left over. That's like the maximum amount I can get out from my, my ointment paper. Um, there will be more than that. So let's write this down. Well, no, that's not, I'm sorry. That's, that, I mean, that's where we're good, but we're not gonna write down that weight yet because there's still an important step. So remember, if you look under step seven, we have not dressed the, the product or cleaned the jar yet. So we're gonna wanna wait for the QA until that's done. Okay, so first of all, double check the exterior of your jar. Looks, looks to me, my jar is really clean. I did a good job. I don't have any contamination on the exterior. Now we're gonna dress the top of the jars. How do we do that? So use a small, a smaller spatula. So this one is a medium size. If you can use a smaller one, that will be even better. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry, no, I'm just trying to center it a little bit more so I can zoom in. Okay, great. All right, so you want to tilt it your spatula about 45 degrees. Okay, and then stay on the top of your jar. And at the same time, you turn, use the other hand, turn your jar, spin your jar. Okay. And then you probably have to do a couple of times as you spin the jar again and again. At some point, you can move to the middle and raise up. I uh, didn't do that job. Let me try one more time. That's not smooth enough. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Just kind of make it kind of swirled on top with a little bit of a lip. You can see it's kind of a little bit of a lip there sticking up there, and it's nice and smooth on top, a little bit of a circular appeal appearance to it. So that's for the dressing of product. We want to make sure that your top should be relatively smooth, and hopefully you can make a little curlicue on the top. And now, even though the exterior of my bottle is clean, I need to clean my bottle one more time. So how do I do that? So I can use a piece of tissue and fold a corner like that. I do not need to clean my exterior because it was clean, but I need to clean the inside, especially the, uh, the, the bottle, which is on the top of the ointment. Okay, so watch me. I can hold a little corner, stick on the top, and then I can clean that. Oh, and then I can clean that. And you will see a big difference by now because inside the bottle, everything's really clean other than that you see the ointment with a little curly cue there, all right? So the reason I like to have a slide uh, above 30 gram is because the dressing and the clean part, you're gonna lose a, a little weight. At this point, we can double check the weight. So this would be our final QA weight. So let's write down a final QA weight of 
30.38. So 30.38 grams is our final QA weight. Quality control. So we got the 30.38 grams. That was the final QA weight. The description. Remember, we have these maniacal descriptions. So we're going to need to describe the color. In this case, I described it as a light brown, or you could say light yellow, whichever you want, kind of a light yellow or light brown color. We're going to describe it as opaque. And then the texture is not coarse. It's not granular. It's fine or smooth. So in this case, since it's a semi-solid, we call it smooth. So we have a light brown, opaque, smooth. And again, is it, what is its odor? In this case, we call it a strong smelling. If it doesn't have a odor, then call it odorless. We just need some sort of description of the smell if it has any. So odorless would be fine. LCD, as we said before, it's, it smells, it's kind of stinky. So we're gonna call it strong smelling. And then lastly, the dosage form, which in this case is an ointment, all right? So this is a light brown, opaque, smooth, strong smelling ointment. So again, color, texture, um, you know, opacity, the smell and the dosage form. Those are kind of the generic ways to describe your final product there, okay? Beyond use date. And this is where I have to apologize. It may be a little bit different than what was in the podcast. With the most recent revision to 795, they've not really differentiated topical products from the oral suspensions that you made last week. Meaning that if the products are preserved, that is you use a commercial base like Aquaphor that contains preservatives in it, okay? Then you can use uh, the 35 days if it contains water. If there's no water in it, you can extend it out actually to 90 days for a topical product that has no water. What would be a topical product with no water? Well, think about Aquaphor. If we had just used hydrocortisone, levigated it with mineral oil and added that to aquaphor, then there would have been no water in the product. You could have extended the beyond use date to 90 days. But if there's any water in it, meaning you're using either an oil and water or a water in oil base or water soluble base, or you levigate something with glycerin because glycerin has water basically in it, then you would use the 35 days. So a little bit longer than the 30 days it had been previously. So 35 days is what I'm going to hold you to for the test if your product has water in it. Otherwise, it would be 90 days. Most often of the time, it's probably likely going to be 35 days. Okay. Storage, the only one I'm going to hold you to grade-wise is room temperature. Although it doesn't hurt, it's a good idea to say airtight container, but it's less critical than it is with the powder. So I won't grade for it, but certainly room temperature, preferably airtight container, same sort of thing for the storage. Drug labeling is kind of a tricky part to this, is in one sense, it's drug name and strength. Understand for topicals that you include the strength as a percent weight per weight. So 5%, you know, two, two and a half percent. So again, drug name and strength do not include levigating agents. So if we had done mineral oil or glycerin, we do not put those external formulation ingredients on the patient's label. So it's just active drug name and strength, Okay, and then you've got to say in the name of the base, because we said the bases have certain properties. So we, in this case, we would include the name Aquaphor. We wanna make sure we know it's in Aquaphor. That is the base that we used, okay? Now, a cream or an ointment can be applied topically to the skin. It can be put into the eye. It can be used rectally. It can be used vaginally. So we need to indicate where this product is being used. And in this case, today and next week, it will be topical. You're making external or topical use products. So topical. And then lastly, the dosage form. Is it a cream or is it an ointment? Well, think about Aquaphor. We showed you that it's yellow, stiff, it's thick, it's greasy, it's not water washable. It is definitely an ointment. So in the end, we had LCD 5%, comma, hydrocortisone 2.5% in aquaphor topical ointment. Now, it's that last part I will tell you that is kind of tricky on the exam sometimes is making sure that you get that completely correct. Okay, auxiliary stickers are easy. The only one we're going to hold you to is external use only. This is a topical product, external use only. It's a great idea to put keep away from children because those ointment jars are not child resistant. So it's not a bad idea to put keep away from children. I'm only gonna grade for external use only, okay? Ah, 
Let's talk about the wet lab. I'll just briefly set it up and then you're gonna work on it. There are some calculations that you're gonna to have to do. You cannot just run and make this product. So let's make sure you're aware of what you're gonna to have to do beforehand. So if we look at the prescription for Colleen Bontrager, it's similar to what we just did, different ingredients. In this case, you're using urea, okay, which is kind of a keratolytic. It actually breaks up the basin membrane again to help slough off the top layer of skin but it's not staining and stinky, kind of like the LCD is, which is nice. So 10% urea, okay? And that urea is going to be a solid powder. And I'll just tell you now, the powder that you're gonna use for urea, it likes salt and pepper. It's well, not pepper, it's like salt, it's granular, meaning that you're going to have to crush it up, use and triturate it in a mortar and pestle. If you just add urea straight into your semi-solid, even if you levigate it, you will get a super gritty product. So we do not want a gritty product. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your urea, get some excess amount, even before you weigh it out, just grab some, go to your mortar and pestle and triturate it into a nice fine powder. Weigh that powder for the amount that you need. Any excess urea you have, just put it back into the supply container. But remember to triturate and grind up your urea to a nice fine powder, all right? So we've got that ingredient that comes as a bulk powder. The other ingredient that you're gonna be using is triamcinolone. And you want in your final product to have a concentration of triamcinolone at 0.01%, all right? Easy enough. The only trick for that is, is that your source of active ingredient, and this is very common when you make topicals, is not a bulk powder. You're gonna use a commercial cream. However, that cream is 0.1% cream, okay? So you have to decide and calculate how much of the 0.1% cream you need such that your final product has 0.01% concentration. So this is where I would tell you, if you're looking at the hard copy that I gave you from last year, look under the calculation section because I don't like the way that I did it previously and I've changed it. So do you see step number two and step number three on the wet lab calculation section? Cross number two and number three off, do it differently. In their place, simply write CQ equals CQ. This is a simply a dilution. You're gonna start with your 0.1% cream and you're gonna make your final product be what concentration? 0.01%, okay? So you can see the C's already. Since this is a dilution, you can say CQ equals CQ. Your initial concentration is 0.1% and your final concentration is 0.01%, which means you just need to substitute the Q's in there. And I won't do the, any more of that for you, but set that up and it's a fairly easy calculation to determine the weight of the triamcinolone cream you need to provide in this product, okay? So that is definitely one of your calculations, okay? Those are your two active ingredients. And again, you're gonna QSAD, meaning up to a total of 30 grams, in this case, using a product called aquaphilic ointment. And if you wanna look, actually, I've set those jars between you and the person across from you, kind of in the same place, the uh, suspending and, and your Aura Plus where Sweet was, there should be a container there for you to share for the two of you. Okay, so when you go to use this, open it up and look, is it an ointment? Is it a cream? You know, you need to use your eyes and your properties to identify what it is, okay? So that's your base. So you're gonna take some urea powder, mix it with some triamcinolone cream. And when that's mixed together, you're gonna to add that into the uh, aquaphilic ointment, right? But there's a problem here because you cannot just add your urea to the triamcinolone. Urea is a powder, triamcinolone is a cream. It's a semi-solid. It will be very gritty. Is there anything we can use in the formulation already to levigate the urea powder? And I would say no, there is no liquid ingredient already called for, which means you need to add an external levigating agent. All right, so you need to decide. I'm not gonna tell you, it's not rocket science, hopefully, but you, again, and you'll notice I've set out both mineral oil and glycerin out there today. You only need to use one of those two today. On the exam, I set them both out because on the exam, they will also both be out there. And if I give you a different base, you're gonna to have to use a different levigating agent. So again, make sure you understand how to determine which of those two levigating agents to use. All right, now, well, and again, I have to do, so, Here's the deal. So I'm just trying to decide. Um, what I would tell you to do with the levigating agent, if you look over there, I'm, this is me just trying to give you some suggestions on this. What To make this a nice learning experience as quickly as possible, what I'm gonna tell you to do is there are three milliliter syringes out there, okay? And let's just say it happens to be glycerin as the correct levigating agent. What I want you to do with your three mil syringe is I want you to suck up 
1.5 milliliters. This is just for the sake of expediency. So 1.5 milliliters of glycerin is not the right amount to use. I'm telling you, it's probably gonna be too much. All right, but that way you'll have more than enough, 1.5 mils. When you then go to actually levigate your urea, you'll have your powder on your, own, uh, on your uh, parchment paper, just like uh, Dr. Wu did. I want you to add 0.9 milliliters. Start with 0.9, because that will be not enough. But it's enough to see something, because the powder will turn into kind of a flaky paste. So remember, 0.9 is a good starting point. Then add 0.1 milliliters more until you're happy. OK, trust me, you need to be done before you get to 1.5. If you have hit 1.5, you've probably gone a little bit too far. How will you know where to stop? That's what I want you to figure out. That's the learning part. So start with not enough, 0.9, and work your way up. And here's the key. Remember, you want to stop when your urea looks like a shiny, sticky glob. It will be a shiny, sticky glob, not a dry, flaky powder, not a puddle, but a shiny, sticky glob. Somewhere between 1 and 1.5, most people get a beautiful, shiny, sticky glob, all right? You need to, at that point, determine how much volume of glycerin, in this case, you used, and then account for the weight. So in your calculations, remember, you're going to take your total, you're going to subtract the weight of the urea, you're going to subtract the weight of the trimcinolone, but you're going to have to subtract the weight of the levigating agent. So remember right here in the additional information, I give you the specific gravity for either mineral oil or glycerin, whichever one you use, you can use that information to subtract the weight of that levigating agent. And until you have done that, you cannot calculate how much of your aquaphilic ointment to weigh. That will be the last thing that you weigh and you can't do it until you've actually already levigated your powder, all right? Now, what worries me is I have posted the keys up at the supply station. I have put a theoretical value for the levigating agent. That is not necessarily the volume that you're gonna end up using. So don't just go over there and use my number, my volume to calculate the aquaphilic ointment. You can double check your other calculations, but to your own levigation so you can kind of know how to figure out what a shiny sticky glob is. And from there, calculate the final amount of aquaphilic ointment. So remember that the keys are there, please check them when you need to and want to, but use your own volume for the levigating, okay? Then you'll see that it's not hard to, and it doesn't take long to make these products, but definitely take your time and kind of figure out, you've probably not spatulated before, you've certainly not levigated before, trying to get it into the ointment jar and getting the dressing of it all correct. So, and do your QA weight and all of that stuff. So take your time and do a good product. Also, I'm telling you, you've got one big last test left, right? We got the one last compounding exam next week, and that will determine essentially your grade for this course will be kind of complete by the end of next week. So do practice. Your, we definitely want you to practice your documentation. There were huge problems yesterday with people not filling out the compounding record with enough detail. We would have taken points off of this on an exam. So we want you to get that practice before the exam next week. So complete your documentation. Don't just come get a number because you've made your product. Make your product, do your documentation, then come get a number and we will do the checkout and measure it. And we'll talk about how we're going to do our QA and everything else. Okay. I show you kind of some of the QA things that we'll talk about. Lastly, again, I know you're not going to do the original missions now, but there is a key posted for the electronic version in, a, in exam. So in Blackboard, feel free to make sure you prepare for that before the exam next week.